Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do a chatty spoiler video talking about Caliban's War, the second book in the Expanse series by James S.A. Corey. I'm currently rereading the series and I already did a spoiler filled review of Leviathan Wakes. So I'm going to have that linked in the cards and down in the description box. If you clicked on this video but you haven't started the Expanse series yet, I'd recommend watching my spoiler free review of Leviathan Wakes, which again will be linked in places. Otherwise, let's get into this book. Spoilers ahead, you've been warned. So I think for a lot of readers, Caliban's War really changes people's opinion of the Expanse series. Going off of Leviathan Wakes, people go into the second book with certain expectations. And rereading this book, I will say that it definitely doesn't feel as much like a thriller as book one. It's a little bit slower paced, at least at the beginning, with a lot more focus on the characters and a lot more political maneuvering. So I think that if people are just looking for nonstop action, action, they find this one a little bit of a step back. In other ways, I know other readers really enjoy this book and will say that it's actually better than the first, and those readers are typically people that are looking for strong female characters, which admittedly were lacking in Leviathan Wakes, but you definitely have some kick-butt women in this one. And I really appreciate this book because for me it really cements what the rest of the series is going to be about. But again, I think that people who go into this one after Leviathan Wakes are often a little bit surprised that it's maybe not quite what they expected it to be. And I know a lot of people who've only read these first two books, so for those of you who are watching this, I really encourage you to continue on with the series. It really just gets better and better as you spend more time with the characters and all of that. But in terms of the story, I really enjoyed the setup of this one. I mean, a little girl that has been kidnapped and stolen away is always a compelling narrative. Now, segueing over to characters, of course, let's talk about May's father, Prax. And I just feel like he's a really likable character because the fact that he is a single father, the one that stayed around when his wife took off, and the whole idea of him searching for his daughter and all of that. I think he's just very likable, very relatable, and so forth. And I am someone who does struggle when a book introduces new characters partway through a series, but I feel like he was just so easy to like that it wasn't a problem in this case. And I just enjoyed how nerdy he was. He was a botanist, and he was kind of geeking out and comparing everything to plant life and all of that. So his character worked incredibly well for me. Of course, my favorite character of this book and overall the best character that was ever introduced in the Expanse series, in my mind, in my opinion, is Avisalia, and I might be slightly pronouncing her name wrong. I do my best. I've been practicing it for days leading up to filming this, so bear with me, but I absolutely love her. She is just the perfect female character. I love that she is older. I think it's really interesting that she is a grandmother and is not this young character, but rather someone who is wise. But despite her age, or rather probably in because of her age, she is just someone who tells it like it is. She is worldly and smart and cunning and I just love her and just the little details around her character work incredibly well like the pistachios that she's constantly eating. I like how they mentioned that she was dropping shells around the Rossi and how frustrated the other characters were about that and the idea that she wears a mask in public that she very purposely puts on a certain persona in order to get respect especially as a woman I think that makes a lot of sense and she just has such a dirty mouth she's constantly dropping f-bombs and again is not not afraid to speak her mind, to say the truth, even when it's ugly and nasty. And when she gets on the Rossi and just starts ordering everyone around, they at first are taken back, but at the same time, they know that she knows what she's talking about and they end up going along with it anyway. So absolutely love her. She is just amazing. I could gush about her all day long. I think she is so brilliant and I just cannot get enough of her. If the entire book was just her perspective, I would be so okay with that because oh, I love her so much. Now, it makes sense to talk about Bobby next because her characterization is so interwoven with Avisalia. And I think it was to Bobby's detriment that they were introduced together because while I love Bobby as a strong woman, I definitely felt like she was overshadowed by Avisalia because Avisalia is all about taking control and manipulating everyone. And Bobby ended up being one of her pawns in a lot of ways and just was pushed out between the different governments and really just became a token character and that was purposely done. She was obviously very frustrated by the situation she was put into. 
but it wasn't until later in the book when Bobby got her armor back and actually got to show off what she can do and how she's this incredible soldier. And that was when I remembered why I loved her so much because when I was reading this, I was like, why did I like Bobby? She's kind of mediocre. And then she got amazing. I always picture her looking like Brienne of Tarth just because of how big they described her to be. I know obviously that a different actress played her in the Expanse series on TV, but I always will picture her in kind of that Brianna Tarth look and I just love her as a strong woman and very much intrigued to see how they'll continue her character in the later books. I obviously have read them but it's really enjoyable to get to revisit this and get to see her development arc as we go through these books. Along those lines, I was really excited to see a little bit of possible romance blooming between her and Alex, or at least kindred spirits as two Martians, and so you get to see them bonding over their shared history together, so I like that a lot. And then Amos continues to be as hilarious as always, but I actually really appreciated that we got to see a bit of his heart and how he is just such a good upstanding person. There was a scene where he's trying to convince Prax to let him know if if he actually did abuse his daughter and he tries to imply that he would be okay, that it happens, all of that. And then you find out that if Prax actually had confessed to having hurt May in any way, Amos would have just thrown him out of an airlock. So I really like that you get to see where Amos stands, that he really is this like straight up person with some really strong morals and he's just so likable. Of course, I've got to talk about Holden and I really like his character development in this one. I think it's really interesting to see how much he was affected by the death of Miller. While they weren't together a really long time, he was so affected by him and you basically see him start to lose a little bit of his innocence and just become a little bit jaded and just starting to make some poor choices and just spiral downwards and I like the fact that Naomi really calls him on it and that's actually one of my favorite things about this book is that it actually started to change my opinion on Holden and Naomi's relationship. If you watch my previous video you'll know that I'm not overly a fan of their romance or their coupling but the second book really does warm me up to them being together because I think you get to see a lot more maturity in their relationship. The fact that they actually separate and at first Holden convinces her to come back to the ship but he casts her to come back as the EXO and not just as his partner and so they come back together first as crewmates and then afterwards rekindle their relationship. So I really think that that was an interesting choice. Not something you see a lot in movies or books or so forth. Usually there's this big romantic scene where they run to each other and get back together but instead they really had a conversation and I just thought it was so different than what I've seen and again like mature is the word I want to use it just felt very adult as opposed to an overly romanticized idea which was my problem in the first book is that their relationship just felt like it was this romantic gesture without a lot of substance behind it but now I'm starting to see that and it's definitely given me a lot more respect for them and along a similar line I love that the crew really became cemented as a found family in this one. Of course you have the conversation where Holden brings up the fact that he became captain but they never really had a chance to vote on that so they really come together and kind of form a more democratic crew situation and I just love that they really all become partners and while the first book is all about them coming together it's not really until this book that I really see them as a group of people and again that like found family feeling that I love so much in space opera and it just really gives me all the nostalgic feels for the series and I think that this book did a lot of good groundwork in creating those relationships and just putting in those little details that really make you realize how closely they work together how much respect they have for each other and I think that it really serves the rest of the series well as you'll hopefully see if you continue reading it. Otherwise, a few other thoughts are that I love the fact that the second book still has a lot of elements of horror. The creatures are fantastic. The idea that the protomolecule is transforming people into these beastly creatures is something I really enjoy. I have seen similar plots in different space operas before, but it's one that I just really enjoy reading or watching, so I do not mind that at all. And the ending of the book in a lot of ways was predictable with May being found safe. Obviously I knew it was coming because it was a reread but even the first time around it wasn't really a surprise. Again the only thing that surprised me was that I thought that Prax died in the situation of saving her but obviously that was not the case and I just was totally out to lunch. 
And as for the ending ending, I have to be careful what I say because I want to keep this video spoiler free for the rest of the series, but I'm very excited to see what the proto molecule from Venus is going to do. I know what it's going to do, but I'm excited to see that play out in the next book. And as for the very, very end, that epilogue with Holden seeing Miller makes me so excited because I, of course, know what that means. I know what's going on and what's going to be coming, but it makes me very, very happy because if you don't know from watching my previous video, I absolutely love Miller and even just the possibility that he might be back is very exciting and I want to say more, but I won't, but what a way to tease the ending of the book. And I imagine for those of you that just finished this book, you're probably very interested in reading the third book, which I highly recommend. It's one of my favorites and I'm really excited to get to it as well. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up here, but I'd love for you all to drop a comment down below, letting me know your opinions and thoughts on this second book. what do you think of the plot twist? What do you think in the new characters? Do you love them as much as I do? And if you're reading the series for the first time, I'd also love you to leave your predictions about where you think the series is going. Let's focus our comments on just the first two books in the series so that we don't spoil anything for those of you that have not read the rest of the series yet. But if you are a fan of the Expanse series, I encourage you to consider subscribing to my channel. I will be continuing on with more spoiler filled reviews for the rest of the books. And I just love to connect with other fans of this series because again, it's one of my all time favorites. I also do read some horror thrillers and fantasy if that sounds good. And if you already subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it around online and hit that notification bell. It really helps with the visibility of videos like this, which have spoilery content, which means that they don't always get as many views. So it really helps YouTube algorithms. If you give me a couple of thumbs up, it just helps other people to find this video if they're looking for spoilery content. So thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.